another amazing, incredible, enlightening <laughs> Cooligans episode. Damn, bro, you you just you you hit play and you didn't even realize you joined a cult. That's right. <laughs> so welcome, my Stop boy. talking to your families <laughs> starting now. <laughs> okay. And from and going forward, you heard <laughs> our Lord has just spoken. <laughs> All right, make sure you're all wearing your special underwear. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you that know. we can sniff. <laughs> all right, rules are rules. You want to be a part of the cult or not? Listen, Blangola is a weird country, dude. We've got Some weird, we've, customs, weird customs. We've got <laughs> odd <laughs> religious freedoms. <laughs> What's good, everybody? Welcome. It's the Cooligans, buddy. My name is Cristian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. Oh. We out here. We're uh, doing this. We uh, Shout out again to Robbie Musto for coming through on the show on Monday. Mm. Uh, the, the show's getting a lot of great feedback. People were just like, wow, how'd you how'd you do that? Why did Robbie Musto come on your show? Yeah, did, did he owe you a favor? <laughs> there was a lot of that. A lot of We don't need those comments. Just say you like yeah, it. Yeah, mom. <laughs> just shut up and listen. Just say you're proud of me. <laughs> Once. <laughs> uh, so uh, shout out to Robbie Musto. If you haven't listened to that episode, please go check that out as well. Uh, yeah, so shout out to everybody watching on YouTube. YouTube, listen to the podcast. Make sure you hit subscribe. Do all the things you're supposed to do on the internet nowadays. We love you for it. Uh, well, I, today's show is going to be dope. Hey bro, oh, there you go. Okay, I just heard you subscribe. That's pretty dope. <laughs> cool. Feels good hearing that mm. hearing that sound uh, when, <laughs> when the fan subscribes. Um, we have a, a dope show today because we have uh, the homie John Strong coming through from uh, from Fox Sports. The superstars uh, continue. Yes, because John is uh, he's been on the show before, but John is. Uh, obviously, uh, the the lead announcer for uh, for Fox, and you know, uh, works with Stu Holden. He's the the voice Which is that unfortunate. all the fortunate. <laughs> 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 yeah. Stu. <laughs> Stu's our enemy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Down with Stu, also part of Blangola. <laughs> okay, that is part of. The, if you're gonna be in the Blangolan cult, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, one of the rules. You just now have get to, over here. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to unreasonably dislike Stu Holden. We love Stu. He's bro. one of the nicest people in the world. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> so. The uh, so John Strong is going to be joining us in a little bit to talk uh, some major league soccer and the playoffs uh, because uh, I mean he's one of the experts he's one of the, the the leading man I trust when it comes to uh, any mm. MLS takes but he he's awesome so uh, but we got to get to it we mentioned uh, on Monday uh, because uh, Robbie was on uh, obviously we didn't have too much time to talk about MLS but the MLS playoffs 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 they've gone uh, they've gone the, the they've first gone. round it was great <laughs> they went, they, thank you for coming dude. <laughs> They they started, you know, we we we're all kind of um adju Ju adjusting to like what it we didn't know what it was going to be like. Give give me your quick now that the first round first the match wild card days and the first the first round. Yeah, who cares about the wild card? Now that the first <laughs> match day that happened already. Now that the first match days of the first round mm -hmm. best of 3. <laughs> now that that's over, what's your quick reaction to this best of 3? Series. Stop uh, touching my water. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, so it, it, my first feeling was like as soon as the matches kicked off, I'm like, I don't care about this. I don't care about the first one, right? right? Like it's just this it don't do mean nothing. It does. It doesn't really mean anything. And I've seen um, Nico on Morning Footy kind of mention this often. You should hear him off the air. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. Wow. Yeah, he clearly has a lot of opinions on it. And we're, we're like, dude, we can't make the whole show about Boca Juniors <laughs> and you disliking the playoff structure, right? Because he he's a. Uh, even at when he's interviewing players, he's like, "But there's no aggregate, right? You don't care, right? You Every don't. Time, how could you even but care?" He, about he keeps the fact explaining <laughs> it too, as if people don't know, understand what an aggregate score is. But it it's like because you would have been buried if it was four one. Yeah, dude, we know. <laughs> we can't keep having the same conversation, right? Like Daniel Shallow, I saw on the show, he was just like, he's "A sweetheart." We, we just got to adjust, right? Got to adjust. But, but, but it, what are your your initial takes? Because MLS changed the playoffs every year, baby. Yeah. Look, so they don't they don't change the kits. <laughs> Everyone in Europe's like, we get new kits every year. MLS like, how about we get new playoffs? So every year? I mean, I'll, I'll I'll show the the they lease their playoff structure, the scores, and this is and th and this is relevant to the the point I'm about to make. I did say quick take. You're pulling a Nico here. No, no, I'm <laughs> just saying, like again, Philadelphia Union three one, LAFC five two. Uh, the, the games the, once it, once a team is up two goals, you, yeah, I'm done. Th this is that's what and that's my main issue. And it's just like 
It, I lose something. You gotta score more. It means nothing. <laughs> score as many as you want. And it, it takes away. Buddy, pull the keeper. <laughs> we don't care. You won. It takes a little bit of juice out of the game. Uh, and that's the, the frustrating part that um, even though, look, I, you know, I've been watching games, you know, or if I'm a fan of a team and, and, get heartbroken and in like aggregate you're like oh man we but we scored enough goals or whatever and it's just like you you just it's a frustrating having to do the math and this one these goals are worth two think about if you're sporting kansas city mm -hmm. and you lose the next two matches one nil right your fans are gonna be like bro on aggregate <laughs> yeah yeah, that's gonna happen. So I mean, this is this, this is the frustration with changing the format. I don't like. Often. I don't love this format. I like the idea of a three game structure because it gives you the well. We'll find out who's really the best, mm -hmm. right? But now that I'm seeing it in action, I think could they not have tried this at MLX Next Pro? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ollie, could we not, Ali Curtis? We should have pitched it to him. Ollie, said, could we do a little dry run? <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Low rehearsal. You know, every once in a while, you and I remember back in the day, we'd be like, "All right, let's just do something. We have there's something we have to do." And then we'd be like, yeah, "Let's just record it just in case mm -hmm. this dry run is the one." You right, know what right, I mean? Right. But we still got one out. <laughs> so. That's what we should have done with this structure because I think we would have seen the flaw in that. Yo, this first game don't mean nothing, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Uh, I guess look, the second game they should have done groups. Why didn't they do groups? Do groups in what? Uh, they should have done a whole pod. Oh, like a, yeah, like a walk groups. up style group. Uh, yeah. Champions League, bro. Could have been interesting as well. Yeah. Also, why are there? Why is there so much time in between games? That's the bigger question. Why is there? It's an not a bigger question. Break? It's the second one I asked. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. I mean, if Sporting Kansas City wins the next game, they have twenty days. Well, they did in between matches. The, twenty. The previous two years. Uh, or two years ago, when they switched the format to the single there elimination, was two weeks until the last round. Yeah, but but so but that that the single elimination was because of that alleviated that issue because we the the first few years we were going to MLS Cup. You know the playoffs started in goddamn August and then it ended in December. I'm exaggerating. <laughs> No, but it's true. It was, it was like, like shorts <laughs> weather for the first for the first game, and then we're damn winter coats. <laughs> the playoffs shouldn't last this long because it's like you I, shouldn't go through two seasons. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, uh, we shouldn't go through two menstrual cycles uh, before we get to <laughs> yeah. the final. Which is finally, I'm glad our new sponsor. Uh, <laughs> imagine that's how we. <laughs> I'm just trying to make jokes that incorporate time. In Everybody, them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you got any others, please. How go long for you it. been in a relationship? <laughs> And shit, where you're like, how do I tell people two months? Oh, I know, <laughs> bleeding. <laughs> okay, it's uh, it's natural and it's a beautiful process. <laughs> oh right. yeah, dog, free bleed. We, Blangola allows it, bro. In fact, it encourages it. <laughs> okay, no tap out out here. <laughs> anyway, I, every seat covered in plastic. <laughs> I, we bro. mentioned uh, like we, our way less. We are comedians, folks. Please don't take us yeah, seriously. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> Sometimes that's it, not a real flag. That's the thing. Me. You know, before <laughs> uh, when we used to do our show, we used to always say that we were comedians at the top of the show, and then we stopped doing that. And then now people are like, "These guys are crazy people. <laughs> what are they saying?" <laughs> it just. Uh, but also, it's in the clips. There's no context. <laughs> so it's, I encourage you to look at our comments. Right now, there are a lot of Serbians having conversations. The, the, the Larry Nance clip was just him being like, yo, I don't want to play basketball in a fire engulfed arena. And people are like, how dare you disrespect our culture? One guy legitimately put, yeah, so we kill our neighbors and what? He really right, wrote right, that. Right. I don't know what that means. I hope that's. <laughs> I'm like, just a sports euphemism. Sir, could you tell us you're a comedian before you type that? <laughs> Please do so, because we're getting a little worried. Uh, so, what you mean, our? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, that's uh, my main concern. the The fact that if the result gets a little um, out of hand, if the if a team is up two two nothing, where, and and I think it highlights the fact that there were no draws in these first uh, uh, these first matches because there wasn't a fight. So yeah, there isn't that incentive. But that to, that changes now. Now the games are on the line. Right, right. But no, and but still, like the, the the games that were close. So like, um, Dynamo RSL. That was probably one of my favorite games. 
uh, of of the first round because they it wasn't a blowout. But it was a back and forth, right? Uh, I think Dynamo scored first, then RSL, uh, and then uh, Dynamo got the, the the game winner. But that the game was close because that they they if RSL ties it goes right to to penalties. Mm-hmm. So, but the you know then I mean I'm trying to make sense of some of these games. Orlando Nashville. That game was so brutal outside mm. of the 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 goal, uh, which is Cartagena, w- right? W- w- Wilder Cartagena, which is what is just one a great more time, name. like Wilder. Wilder, I think he goes by Wilder Cartagena. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, which some is- some doctors in Latin America are be like, I can't let you do this. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't. I'm not. I heard, I heard. Nah, man. We locking doors, dog. You ain't walking out here with you that gotta baby. You got to listen yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, yo. Open up. I don't you care see what this religion Bible? you are. This is all yeah, you can Yeah, exactly. I don't care what religion you are. Open a Bible and pick one. Okay, they're all there. <laughs> There's a lot. There's no more. Like, Somebody... you, can open a, you can open up any uh, any religious book you want. You can pull scrolls out. <laughs> you know, because I've, you know, Dominicans have some, uh, some wild oh, names. Oh, my God. So, uh. Dominicans have names sometimes that look like you just smashed your hand on a keyboard. <laughs> okay. It was autocorrect. Yeah. <laughs> what's uh what's the comedian's real first name? Who? Remember uh the police officer dude. Oh, oh Mark the Ma- Mark the Mayor. Oh, well, I didn't want to say his whole name because oh. we're about to give his government out. <laughs> but whatever. What's his government? Mayo Van X. He say he does it on stage. Oh, does he? Yeah, yeah. What is it? Mayo Van X. <laughs> Everyone heard that, right? <laughs> Mayo Van X. Tell me that doesn't sound like a product in your fruit snack. <laughs> You're uncomfortable eating because you think it's gonna give you cancer. It may give Mayo you Bon X. <laughs> that's his real first name. Yeah, Mayo Bon X. Uh, and that's uh, he's so he's Dominican and Greek, which is also just a great what combo. A, what but, a mix! But clearly, Dad was like, "Nah, he's gonna have a Dominican." Yeah, name. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what if I make it look gr- old Greek when you spell it <laughs> out? He's got sixty letters in his first yeah, name. Yeah, exactly. Is there an, a dash and a seven in there? <laughs> so, uh, did Elon name him? Uh, <laughs> so Elon. Uh, um, so anyway, uh, yes, the, the games that were where the, the 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 scores were fairly close were a little bit more interesting. That Orlando Nashville one, uh, yeah, outside of the the Cartagena goal, um, it, I don't even understand. That was one of the most brutal games. I felt bad for Nashville. They just really couldn't figure anything out. They looked lost. Lo- absolutely lost. Um, the I mean, w- so the, the one game I definitely want to make sure we talk about is St. Louis City against Sporting Kansas City. This is, the, I think, the biggest shock. The only home loss. Right, right. Uh, so, which which sucks because I picked St. Louis to go all the way. Bro. <laughs> so you, th- this was a game where you just assume uh, St. Louis, uh, especially at home, and Sporting Kansas City, just like First playoff, insane season. You know, mm-hmm. the, so SKC wins four to two against uh, San Jose in the wild card, and you're like, oh, that's a sort of a fluke. You know, they got those four goals, but they're playing against a team that's like in in bad form. But Sporting Kansas City looked dangerous. They looked, at, and and St. Louis looked. I don't believe though. Looks like he's back, back. Yeah, yeah. I was um, gonna say the same thing. I mean, I mean, all the goals. Um, uh, I forget, I forgot who scored all. I mean, Shallowy scored. Um, the but and Dembe was the the left back who scored yeah. that first goal was um, it was just like they 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 turned on a uh, a feature that they just never showed the entire the year. update the update the OS update came in <laughs> the new OS update they yeah. they they were like they looked at their FIFA card and they scratched it out they're like nah nah I'm gonna fix this right <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get myself a little I'll bump my numbers up yeah, a little yeah. bit yeah we are going team of the week um, on this one but the the goal from Ndembe and then the goal from uh, Gadi Kinda wow wait yo who are the- who are these guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did this come from? You make these people up? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because it was just really, really impressive, confident goals. And, you know, Ro- uh, Roman Roman Berkey's probably going to win a goalkeeper of the year. He got my vote. Yeah. Um, he was incredible. At letting In balls the regular go season. Th- okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was incredible at letting balls go past him. Yes. And then you get to the playoffs. <laughs> they understand this is important, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I also think outside of it being home, maybe... I, I, and I asked Bradley Carnell this on the show, in a sense. It's like, do you think, like, the re- I said, is this the most difficult thing you've been through this season? Because you've had a pretty successful season throughout. And he mentioned the, the um, U.S. Open Cup, uh, sort of the bounce back from that. He's like, that was kind of t- tough. But I think to some degree there's, like, at least there's something to dangle over this, these players. Because they've been good for so long. Yeah. First season, it feels like everything's gone right. Now there's a little bit of fear. And yeah. maybe we can kind of see... What what they're made out of now, 
Yeah. Um, Whereas SKC, bro, they've been getting beat up for two years. So, and then they finally squeaked through. So, but so it's interesting, right? Because if we would have had the single game elimination, St. Louis would have been out right now. Mm. So, is it? Does it they, feel better that they're not and they have an opportunity to stay in? They stand to benefit the most out of anybody, obviously. Yeah. But no, uh, there's. It kind of it's democratized the playoffs in a way, mm-hmm. allowing this. But remember, after this, it goes to single game elimination. Right, so right. they need to patch this up if they're gonna if they win the next two. They, which they have to, they get to the next round. Yeah, now every game's an elimination game. For every them. single game for them now. So now is like real, real pressure. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess we can ask, like, do do we think this is going to be in Kansas City? So can they actually do this? Are they going to turn uh, things around? Because Sporting Kansas City, I mean, I, just look at the the Fat Mob ratings real quick. Uh, really, the one the one that stands out to me the most is the homie Kyrie Shelton, bro. Kyrie Shelton with an 8.3. Bro, this guy couldn't score. He couldn't, at <laughs> he couldn't score. He could, he, could, he could barely get minutes, or even at Sporting Kansas City. Click, click on his, uh, on his I just want to see what his XG on the day was. 0.10. Not great. Not but great. that's also not what he's asked to do. Do they have his XA no, slide no, no, down no. a little bit? Alexis, he's a forward. He, they do ask him <laughs> to score. He does not score. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, but I mean, he's he facilitates a little more than than score. Well, yes, I, I think this uh, this point of his career, I'm, and obviously with Alan Pulido there, uh, he's being asked to kind of just hold up play. And and Kyrie, I, I, to his credit, he is incredibly good at that. Yeah, he, he is. Can, man could just hold up the ball and, yeah, and keep yeah. the keep the keep possession and keep uh, been in the league for a minute. Yeah, I just he was the first player that recognized us. Remember? Yes, yeah, yeah. When we were, uh, we went to like a, a meet and greet. Yeah, and he goes, "No, I, I, I recognize you guys. Love the show." And we were like, "What? <laughs> okay, that's it, Kyrie. I got my, I'm tattooing you on my yeah, body, bro. Yeah. <laughs> bro. I'll never talk about you disrespectfully." On the show. <laughs> um. So the so yeah, just generally, just uh, everyone was they, like nobody played poorly. No. On the team. It's just so remarkable to see this team that had such a terrible, terrible start to the year uh, play this well. And, and, and like, who knows if they can keep it going for, for the rest of the uh, playoffs. But to to they, they they intimidated St. Louis. And that's the one thing. In I did. their house. In their house. Yeah. Yeah. So and like Peter Vermees, man, you know, I, when we interviewed him, we tried to shake him a little bit. And he was like, no, it's. Fine, we're gonna we're be fine, and we're like, you ain't gonna be fine. Right, every people <laughs> are c- calling for uh, his head, basically. To, Remember to, when he gave himself a, f- a five year extension? He's also the director of football. <laughs> right, right. He's like, no, no, I'm doing a great job. He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's hey. like, he's like a senator <laughs> upping their pay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, I think I deserve a raise. By the decree. <laughs> <laughs> but I, <mama>. Yeah. <laughs> I just spoke to the director of football. <laughs> great conversation. He's a great guy. Super yeah. handsome. Very nice. <laughs> Very smart. Uh, he has given me an extension. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the the other thing I wanted to make sure we discussed was um, Philadelphia Union New England Revolution because the the Union won at home, which is not a huge surprise. The New England Revolution, uh, obviously, after uh, Bruce Arena got fired, and then all the issues with the coaching, and, and uh, there's a lot going on. Um, you would imagine that they're in a little bit of disarray. And, uh, and I think it showed a little bit in this game. Yeah, I think getting into the playoffs was part of their... They had such a buffer built in. Yeah. They were so good for so long. But if there was... If the, the season started 12 games later than it did, they wouldn't be in the playoffs. This is not a playoff team in the way they're playing. And also without Carlos Heel, mm-hmm. rough. So, uh, but the, the big story out of this game was the, uh, the allegation... Uh, apparently, uh, so uh, Bobby Wood uh, made an accusation towards Kai Wagner that there was a slur used in the game. And late in the game, um, it was pretty chippy and, and players were going back and forth, kind of uh, arguing with each other. And there was a long delay to kind of figure out what was going on. I think Witty was on the, the call for this game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, it's all alleged. I saw uh, Tom Bogert and um, and Pablo Maurer had uh, reported on it and said that there currently is an investigation. I don't know, you know, I've, I don't have any idea which direction it's going to go or what's going to happen. Um, I mean, we've we've already kind of experienced this a few times. So the, if, it was this a is slur. the third one, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so Van Zier, ta- Taxi, Taxi Fantas, 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 yeah, uh, Dante, Dante Van Zier. Zier. Now this, bro, it's um, crazy. And now this. So, but uh, this is really, really shocking and really disappointing for especially Philadelphia Union fans 
uh, love Kai Wagner. And yeah, and there was, they were trying to get him re-signed, right? They were trying to get him right. an extension. And, and, and I think the main issue with that is just like there's no money, right? Oh, they, they don't want to make him a DP, but they can't pay him. MLS doesn't allow you to pay to when you re-sign a player. You can't pay them an exorbitant amount of money. There's like rules to uh, how much really of an increase. Dumb. And this is a real, real issue. And Kai Wagner, I've, we follow him on Instagram, and he posts uh, very like sincerely on his like IG stories, and he says like, like basically like I want to stay, and I want to. He's like he even said like I'm not even asking for like a lot, but I want to kind of be paid what I'm worth. And and there's just nothing they can do because they can't. They this Alexander Collins from NYCFC kind of left for the same reason. It, it was like I he could he should be paid a certain amount of money, but MLS will not allow you to uh, to pay them uh, to give them an increase unless you like make so them a dumb. DP. Yeah. This is so dumb. It's very silly. So so uh, I, hopefully a lot of these rules, especially roster and pay rules, switch up now that. So rumor is that MLS is looking to. Yeah. Make adjustments it, this to is their it, roster it's an roles. interesting one because the I guess they're concerned just the way that, you know there's financial fair play. We were talking to Robbie Musto about the stuff with City and the stuff with Everton, mm. uh, and every league kind of has their own way to to you know rein in spending. Yeah, like, yeah and yeah, that's yeah. really what it's about. But it's an annoying one as an MLS fan because if there's a player that plays well, the team is penalized. Mm -hmm. uh, for that, same thing. Julian Gressel when he was Atlanta United, or you're unable to keep your player. You can't keep it because the the, the, other, the the competition from other teams to pay him more or right. pay him. That's kind uh, of what happened with Zeller Ryan, right? Why he kind of left abruptly in the middle. They he, knew he they weren't going to be able to keep him. I, I thought it was just he got a fat offer Maybe. from Saudi, and he was. But, like, he, knew, but he knew there was no chance Columbus right, could pay right, him anything yeah, yeah. close so, to that. That, so that's uh, MLS has to adjust to the global market and how that is gonna well, because I want to there's players that you love and they can't stay with the team for a long time which unless doesn't they make like sense because one of the biggest issues with with uh, MLS is being able to keep a a good team together right it's very difficult and in a lot of these cases Alexander Collins was post an MLS Cup wanting to stay yeah and yeah. you can't it's yeah. ridiculous and Kai, and Kai Wagner has been uh, not only one of the best players. For the union, but literally one of the best players in the league. I mean, it, it, is Kai? No, no. Um, uh, the other guy. Um, I'm forgetting his name. Um, the, that takes the penalties uh, uh, on the union. What's Gazdag. Da Daniel Gazdag. Gazdag. Him, yeah. him, and Gazdag are together. Are great. Are just uh, two. Uh, again, players you don't necessarily expect. Uh, well, needless to, to say, for the Philly fans, man, I hope it's a big misunderstanding. I hope so too. So the the so this is the interesting thing with the. With with Kai Wagner, as far as if people are not aware of this story, and if you were wa if you watch uh, some of the clips from that uh, se segment of the game, um, Kai Wagner is German. Mm -hmm. Bobby Wood uh, play is American. He was born in Hawaii. Yeah, but he played in Germany for like ten years. And, and he I don't think Kai knew that. Hoffenheim, I think. He, I forgot what he played. Hamburg. Yeah. Hamburg. Hamburg. Oh, that's right. He played in Hamburg. So uh, Bobby Wood is a fluent German speaker. I don't think homie knew that. <laughs> so that's <laughs> which like, happens to us sometimes. You hear people where speak we Spanish. Where we speak fluent German, yeah. Yeah. Bro, yeah, I yeah. Like, dude, <laughs> dude, Kai is just saying, wow. Sh no. People don't know that we yeah, know. Yeah, well, uh, right? <laughs> Guten Tag, bro. <laughs> All types of German. And no, people don't realize that we are Latino sometimes. Mm -hmm. Or at least uh, this might happen more to, more to me. Happens to me quite a yeah, bit. Yeah. Okay. And you'll hear people say something, and I'll mm -hmm. be like, "Oh, que dijiste? You yeah. know, or I'll say something in Spanish like, "Okay, muchísimas gracias," and with like a heavy accent, I'm like, "Oh, okay, oh, I, I mean, that was I a made a mistake. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> <My man> did <didn't. laughs> Oops, you don't even know there's an owl on that. Owl. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Kai Wagner had no idea that Bobby Wood spoke German. Said something allegedly. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say disrespectful because we don't know what it is. Yeah, yet. I don't know what it is. Um, all we know is that we saw Bobby Wood kind of talk to the ref. I think it was Ted Uncle who was refing this game, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, no. Pierre Luce Lousy. Oh, you're literally a French, yeah, yeah. Frenchman. Uh, yeah, thank you for trying. <laughs> it. I thought, great anyway. effort. Great effort. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. My German's fluent. My French, yeah. I'm still working friend, on. You can't have both. Your brain can't do both. Well, I look like Romelu Lukaku. I know. What he grew up in the Alsace region of France. Okay. Knows French and German. Okay. We can't all be K Dot though. Uh, huh? All right. K Dot so. right now. Oh, he does not know Pierre Luc Clausier. 
So, uh, uh, what was I saying? Okay, so, yeah, it, it, there was a moment um, when Bobby Wood is uh, looking at the ref, and he kind of points at his at his face, like at his eyes, and I can't tell if it was a, hey, yo, did you see that? Or he, he said made, something, he about, said my eyes, something yeah. about my eyes or my face or something like that. So, look, you hate to see stuff like this, and it's like um, the Philadelphia Union are a just – Look, I just the the fan. I mean, we all have opinions about like Philly fans or whatever, but uh, the union are just uh, the the union fans love the union in a way that's different than like the Eagles or the Phillies or whatever. There's just like a there's a um, deeper sort of like there's a sincerity. To, it's a community yeah, thing. Yeah. It's like they they there's a lot of ownership over the club, and and I know this is an embarrassing thing for. Uh, for the fans, especially this fan base, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you hate to see it. I, we'll see what happens. I mean, there's, uh, I think, uh, 85 days between uh, match one and match two. So <laughs> who knows uh, what's going to happen? Yeah. There should be some time to sort it out. So I think they'll figure this out by what Labor Day next year, <laughs> <laughs> which is right before the game. Uh, so th yeah, uh, disappointing. But uh, uh, overall, the uh, any uh, big surprises as far as this, this first round? I think the of biggest the surprise is just St. Louis's home field advantage not really existing. Okay. Again, it's the first game, but to me, I was shocked. I picked them to go all the way. Uh, I so said, I said last week because you picked them to go all the way. I'm like, Alexis, you need some type of playoff experience to to handle some of these moments, right? And they have zero playoff experience. And I was <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, Roman Berkey hasn't played in many MLS well, playoffs. Well, now you got that experience, <laughs> so, bro. Don't do that again. So get got it out of the way. Uh, Biggest surprise bad would be St. Louis's approach. Biggest surprise good, I would say LAFC. I was I going to say the same thing. I wasn't sure which LAFC was going to show up. Looking yeah. like old LAFC again. Yeah. Hey, yo, Denny Bowanga. When he shows up, it's crazy. I mean, it is. It's another level. It is kind of wild. I can't tell if it, if. Uh, it, it looks like LeBron playing. He turns against it his off kids. and turns it on. It's insane. <laughs> he's he's just so like I, athletic is not even the word to accurately describe what he does. The, there's a superhumanness. There's a there's a like yeah. There's like it's like so, you know like I play in a Sunday league and there's 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 five divisions. Ha heavy flex. <laughs> okay, co-ed, bro. Yo, damn. <laughs> Don't mean to. Everybody like... gets a piece, bro. <laughs> okay. Everybody gets cooked by this guy right here. <laughs> okay, whatever gender you throw at me, I don't care. You're bro. getting cooked. Babies getting <laughs> cooked <laughs> out there, bro. Mateo's he's... ankles, bro. bro he <laughs> did the he did the Anthony spin around the <laughs> stroller, dog. You don't care about you or your feelings. So, but I play in a uh, there's five divisions. I play in the fourth one. Hey. Okay, giving back to the community. <laughs> Let them see the grace. Playing the fourth one, and but so, sometimes there are people that like, bro, you you play in second. You shouldn't be <laughs> yeah, playing yeah, 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 here yeah. with us. Yeah. Okay, and that's what Danny Buanga looks like. I'm like, you belong. You're in the wrong division, bro. Yeah. Danny Buanga looks like a Premier League player who had like a. Uh, an issue that got him booted off his team, <laughs> and he's trying to rebuild his credibility <laughs> in the lower leagues. Be like, right. damn, Denny? <laughs> Who's uh, Troy, uh, what's his name? Dini. Troy Dini. Like, Troy Dini. Yeah, 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 it was basically the Troy Dini story. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he is. There, there's a grace with which he plays. That Dude, I'm the, like, the, the set that's piece. That's not taught. The that's, set piece that he scored on mm. uh, was. It, it, it also, Vancouver did look pretty bad in that in that particular set piece, but. But Buanga's moving so fast that it's just like he's like strafing. You know what I mean? Like he's like playing like a, a first person Have shooter. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen that? Have you seen that meme of that guy? So fast. That guy who's walking like yeah, that. Yeah, on the ride. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's Denny Buanga out there. Why does he move so fast? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> dog. Bro, he's like gliding with the. Yo. Yeah, the the pimp named Slickback song. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a pimp named Slickback. Anyway, yeah, I watch TikTok. I'm wow. hip. Uh, while he's playing, that's how good he is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So the LAFC were pretty impressive, and I I think the, really what did it was the the they were. Um, uh, did you see Chirondolo and uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the Apple TV in the Apple um when the Apple event they did the the introduction and Chirondolo was part of the. Um, the, 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 when they introduced the new MacBook M3, 
Uh, really? Yeah, that, that I did not. I see. didn't see that. Yeah, either. so I, I, I'm sure we can find it somewhere. Uh, I'll look for it. But the yeah, so Chir- so Chirundolo, the the basically the cameras in the the LAFC locker room, and it's going. You know, they're highlighting all the um, Apple sort of products and and shows and stuff like that. And then w- the the second like scene is uh, in the LAFC locker room, and Chirundolo has a, a MacBook, and he's like, "Oh, we all we we got to figure out how to stop this guy," and it's uh, messy on the screen. Uh, which is like a, a nice little joke because they got cooked by, by, yeah, 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 <laughs> by yeah. Inter Miami uh, during the season. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's so kind of cool. That's kind of cool. All right. Real quick, before we go to John Strong interview. Yes. One word answer. Who's your favorite to win it all now after the first ma- round of matches? Mm, one word. One word. That's two words. <laughs> um, or one team name. I'm yeah, going to say, I'm, I'm say Columbus. Yo, Columbus do look good, though. Columbus did look great against Atlanta. Uh, I got to stick with St. Louis. <laughs> oh, damn, bro. I'm, sorry, I'm going down with the ship, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis rearranging the death chairs on 100%, the Titanic. Yeah, so. man. I'm, 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 look, after the, if they lose, you find me dressed like a like my wife <laughs> yeah. trying to get on one of them lifeboats, bro. I mean, this this should be the, the, the second match from uh, St. Louis and Sporting Kansas City. Should... St. Louis should win that game. You would expect that there should be a third game there. And mo- I feel like there will be a third game. Yeah, go back to St. Louis. Retribution. Union should take care of the the Revs. LAFC should take care of Vancouver away as well. Dynamo, I think, also should uh, take care of RSL. Cincinnati just Easy. absolutely light washed work. the Red Bulls the other day. Light work. Um, Sounders oh. light work. Yeah, I mean, Jesus Ferreira missing those. Two wide Two open. Two great, great chances. I, I don't understand what's going on with him. Bro, he's trying to get traded, bro. <laughs> so, uh, all right. We'll, we'll talk some more uh, Major League Soccer with uh, with John Strong. Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, because, uh, like I said, uh, absolute expert in, in, in Major League Soccer. One of the, uh, I would say, an MLS historian, even. Yeah, yeah, knows, yeah. knows it all. Juan uh, Fuerte. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that's it. That's why he wants to. That's why he wants to go that's by. His black gold. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, uh, all right, let's do it. Let's uh, chat with John, John Strong. All right, we are back and we are joined by uh, John Strong. Literally, it's been the too, legend. It's been too long since we've had him on uh, the show uh, because John Strong is an absolute homie. But joining us now is John Strong, Fox Sports lead play-by-play announcer. Uh-huh. He's called. Some of the biggest matches on the planet, including the last two FIFA World Cup finals. You can catch his call next month on Fox Sports coverage of the UEFA uh, Euro 2024 qualifiers and December 9th when the MLS Cup airs on Fox. That's crazy. John Strong, I read that perfectly. That was a great read. That was a great read. The the lawyers are thrilled at how you did that one. Thank you very much. No, you know, I literally just recently, I was thinking, to I forget what giant TV network I was watching one of you on as you guys have blown up last couple of years. I'm thinking to myself, wow, they've really become so much more big time that I haven't been asked to come on for years. And then it was like a week later. (laughs) <laughs> uh, that that you know, I got the email, so I'm I'm thrilled to be chatting with you Look guys. And that. So it, there's almost there's something about your uh, frustration and hatred towards us that put something out into yeah, the universe yeah, yeah. for us no, to reconnect. I, like re- resentment, <laughs> resentment, and jealousy. Those are yeah. better words. Yeah, yeah. you can tell how long we've been married when when someone uh, talks bad about us. We're like, ooh, <laughs> I should I should reach out. <laughs> Uh, John, but I mean, you're you're an absolute legend. It's always an honor to have you on the show, dude. Yeah, le- I mean, that's just uh, how are you doing? How's yeah. it, how's it how been? been? It's been a couple of years since we've uh, you know had you on the show, but how's yeah. it going? My memory is it was literally a couple of weeks before like the COVID pandemic. Like that was sort of I think the last time I came in studio with you guys. No, listen, it, we we had an incredible summer. I was gone for two months straight. Like we did the Gold Cup, we did the Women's World Cup, um, and they've kind of left us alone this fall. So I literally. This fall, except for a couple of UEFA Euro qualifiers, we had one MLS game. Like I'm, I'm just ferrying my kids around. I'm like assistant coach to my wife on our daughter's soccer team. Um, I'm taking my son to and from places. I've had multiple parents at school pickup be like, so what is it that you do? Because you're right. just kind of always here. Um, <laughs> and I just make a weird excuses. So it's, it's, been, it's been a very nice fall after a crazy summer. We've got a fun couple weeks coming up. End of Euro qualifying, MLS Cup. Um, and then we're kind of gearing up because, I mean, next summer, man, we got Copa America and the Euros right at the same time. Whether people realize that or not, you're going to essentially have a World Cup for a month. 
because you'll have Euros games in the morning, Copa America at night, all on Fox Sports. And so, yeah, any chance, you know, Stu and I get and, and Alexi and others to kind of actually see our wife and kids and recharge the batteries, uh, we, we take it, you know what I mean? I, I do want to find out because obviously the next World Cup is going to be on Fox as well, and I think that's 48, if I'm not mistaken. It's 48 teams. Oh, yeah, yeah, I thought you meant 2048. No, but... yeah, I, I think that's excessive, but okay, yes, yeah. that is correct. Yeah, 48 teams, bro. We talked to you once before a while ago, and you told us a little bit about your prep work, the index cards, the, the going crazy with all the notes. They they just ratcheted it up even more. Did they even consult with you, dude? <laughs> Uh, no, it actually works for us because then when we're in contract negotiations, we're like, hey, you know how many games you have uh, for is. us to be doing here? It's like, it's no, games. it's. They should have wrote it, that it up is. in the bio. <laughs> We've had those conversations of like, do any of us really conceptualize what this 2026 World Cup is going to look like? Because, you know, we got a taste of it. I mean, remember, we're in Doha last year, right? Doha, that was basically like New York City hosting a World Cup, like games in the tri state area. That was what Doha and Qatar was. And then being in Australia New Zealand, it was like, wait, I have to get on a three-hour flight to go call a game tomorrow? This is kind of crazy. Like, we get used to the, the smallness of it. And so I, I think that's one of those things FIFA's grappling with right now. 100-plus games in that World Cup spread across three continents. And, you know, those of us that live here understand, like, hopping on a flight to Guadalajara or to New York or, you know, up somewhere to Canada. Like, it's not easy. So, yeah, there, that's going to be wild. That's going to be an insane summer. So that's where... It's like when you're an expectant parent and they're like, when you can sleep, you sleep. That's how we feel about 2026 World Cup. When we can sleep, we sleep. Because when that thing hits, uh, it's going to be insane. <laughs> it's going to be a wild That's life. good advice because, John, since the last time you were on the show, I, I just had uh, a baby. I have a, a son. He is seven months old. And I, the, when he sleeps, you know, you sleep. I'm not really using that. Uh, I should be, but... There's, 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 when he sleeps is the only time you can get stuff done. How do you manage this? I, I tell you, I do a lot of my prep work very late at night. Honestly, like that's a big <laughs> common thing is I put the kids to bed. And I'll sometimes say to my daughter, because she fights sleep, I'm like, you have to go to sleep. I've got four hours of like DC United prep or whatever. <laughs> like you, I need you to fall asleep, please, so I can get downstairs and start this thing going. So, yeah, I spend a lot of very late nights. That's, that's why I have great. out of frame. I have a coffee machine and a tea maker, like like in my office, because I just keep you know keep that going late at night. It's just an I IV, like an telling, IV of coffee, yeah, and just 100%. straight caffeine. You're telling yeah. a child if you don't go to bed, we lose the house. Yeah, seriously, this is literally <laughs> our livelihoods at stake. I have I to know who's starting a goal for Australia. Please, right, for the right. love I would of God. Love if- if your daughter was just like, I, I don't know what Rooney has done this year. He's yeah. getting he's playing. He's playing his keeper out of the box. Yeah. He's getting hit over the top too many times. It's like your kid's like, I'm so stressed. I can't sleep because uh, you know my dad's sitting here trying to figure out what's going on with the Columbus Crew back line. Yeah. It is funny. I mean, they're they're starting to get it in different ways. My son's about to turn ten. My daughter just turned six, and they kind of get like. Dad's got a tournament coming up, or Dad needs to watch this game for work, or my daughter still occasionally would be like, you know, that's your voice on TV. I'm like, no, that's Steve Cangelosi. I'm sitting right across from you on the couch. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you know. yeah. um, so no that, one, that's been a funny process. No one in the world would confuse your no. voice with <laughs> Kanji Man. You got two very distinct voices. <laughs> I, the, the other funny one that has happened sometimes is my son will watch soccer videos on YouTube. And my voice will come out of, like, the tablet that he's watching. That's a very jarring experience. And it's very imagine. normal to him now. Oh, yeah, Dad, here's your voice again. Okay, cool. Bro, if, right. I pulled up, if I pulled up, like, a, uh, you know, a Gabriel Jesus highlight clip, and I heard my mother on there like, Okay, Gabriel Jesus, mira, el fuacatazo que hizo. I'd be like, Mom. Wow, mom. You have quite. I did not know you were moonlighting. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a Premier what League range this woman has. So uh, let's talk about uh, these MLS Cup uh, playoffs because. This- let's get your first. First, let's just get your thoughts. Yeah. On the three the game three games. Best of three first round. I mean, look, in general, more games, uh, the contract negotiations, you always love to see that. Love but to that, see that. So, but outside of that, wow, how are you feeling about it? You know, I'm one of these weirdos that I actually kind of wait for something to happen before I have an opinion about it. Like, I know that was what made me a very poor sports talk radio host, and it's why I'm not invited <laughs> on podcasts often, because I don't have hot takes. Like, you know, listen, I, I remember doing those two-leg aggregate goal series, and people yell and scream about, you know, are we using away goals tiebreakers or not, and why are these lower-seeded teams winning, and where's the advantage for the higher seed, and these sorts of things. And so we switched it, 
And we went in 2019 to single game playoffs, and then people are yelling and screaming, the playoffs go by too quick. Some of these teams don't get a home game. I think we do suffer in MLS from whatever the league does, there's a huge army of people who are just going to yell and scream about it no matter what. And so it's hard to judge sometimes whether it is good or not. I mean, you have people, and I understand the reasons why, and some of them are my friends, putting pieces out about how meaningless and awful the regular season is now because of League's Cup and this playoff format, they they shattered their own prior record for attendance MLS this year. So it, it, it's hard to say that like people aren't interested in that. I'm interested to see, you know, the, the pattern continued of last year, I think it was more than 80% of the games, it was the home team advancing. So that continued in this one. So does that mean that in all these series we're going to have the away team win their game at home so the game two, and then what happens in game three? And I, I think it just depends on what are you looking for. Do you want drama? Do you want surprise? Do you want action? Is it important for you to have higher-seeded teams advance in every round? Because that gives justification and weight to the regular season. I think a lot of it depends, too, on what form of exceptionalism you subscribe to. Are you a believer in European soccer exceptionalism, where you have to do it aggregate goals, two-game series, that's the right and proper way? Or you believe we're in American exceptionalism where, like, we just had a terrific, with the exception of the World Series, the baseball playoffs were terrific this year. We have these incredibly compelling seven-game series in basketball and hockey. And there have been times where we do a great playoff game. We're like, man, it'd be awesome to have another couple games of this. So I, I'm kind of waiting to see how it plays out. I think it's a bummer that, that there's been a lot of negativity in front of it because it's been kind of fun so far. But... I guess that's the question, is like, what, what are people looking for? What do they want out of their playoffs? And is there really any format that MLS can do that people will universally love? And that the answer to that is probably no, sadly. So, yeah. I mean, as far as the question about what exceptionalism we prefer, I think the answer is quite clear. <laughs> Uh, so there's not much, <laughs> not much of an issue there. Yeah. But we do everything right. <laughs> <laughs> but we're allowed to. So I, I want to answer that question. What, what as fans do we want from these yeah. playoff matches, right? And we want that drama. And what I, what I'll say, and we mentioned this earlier, is that essentially, if a game gets too, um, if the lead grows by, essentially by two goals. The game changes. The, the tone of the game. Right, a the, team could just walk away from it. Yeah, the, the energy mm -hmm. that a team is going to put in to, to, to play that, that second half or final 30 minutes when they're down two goals. And I think we sort of saw that in, in a couple of the matches already. Um, so that's, that's my frustration. Every minute in each match doesn't hold the same weight. That's kind of my, my main concern. And, and I think the aggregate goals fixes that issue where – you give all the effort to the final minute because no, every goal. Because then you have to play all three games if it's aggregate. No, no, I'm just uh, I, no. I, I'm saying it shouldn't be three games. You can't just be... give up in a second half because you know you're down three goals. Yeah, and you're just going to go to the next one. And, and and I get that point. And I think again, that's a very soccer thing, right? Because in in other American sports, when you think about baseball and hockey and basketball, the, okay, hey you guys, we, we've lost this one. Let's just circle the wagons, and we've got game two coming up tomorrow. And it's not that's not as big of a thing that people get upset about but I think in soccer understandably we have built this mindset and the mentality of we're doing it right when every single second matters like that's the point of kind of the Premier League is that every single game matters or aggregate goals every goal matters and so I think it is difficult to if you have that soccer mindset whereas if you have if you're a basketball fan or a baseball fan or a hockey fan I don't think that's as, as big of a deal okay this one's lost we're not going to get this one let's put the backups in and rest the bodies when's the next game of the series. So I, I get that point. Um, one of the other challenges I would say with the aggregate goal series is how much effort we had to expend explaining to people who was winning. That was a difficult right. one. So the point that in 2018 in Seattle, the Timbers thought that they had won. And it was like, no, guys, the away goal tiebreaker that happened earlier, <laughs> that is not a thing anymore. And so that's, I think, one of the things where that became difficult is we had to keep saying, like, yes, Team A is winning tonight, but actually, Team B is winning the series, and here's why. And I think that was a difficult for casual fans sometimes to kind of wrap their head around. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? Because every year MLS playoffs... It's your show, Alexis. You can do whatever you want. Every, every year <laughs> MLS playoffs change, right? It's one of the, it's one of the you know, taxes, death, MLS playoffs change. <laughs> uh, here's my suggestion for next year. Everybody makes it in. Single game elimination based on your seeding. 
Just like a giant Thunderdome for everyone. Huge. I mean, you could. <laughs> it's huge. It's around all the pitches. <laughs> okay. If, if you really want to get in the weeds of this all, stuff. All 48 teams yeah. play at the same time yeah. on the same pitch. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a other. fair point because here's the thing. You know, when we talk about like promotion and relegation, the actual reason that promotion and relegation exists is because of the championship format. Because if you're going to play every team twice, you can't have too many teams in that league. You have to keep the league at a certain size. Yeah. To, otherwise, you're going to have a, a you know season that lasts a year and a half. That's yeah. really why promotion and relegation exists. And what I said to people sometimes is in MLS, if you have playoffs, you can have 60 teams in MLS. It doesn't matter. It's just a matter of how you want to determine the champion. And so... I, I listen. I get all these. I don't think there's one right answer. I don't think the perfect right answer exists. Honestly, I feel just like I just you, said it. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think you're right, and that's the problem is because you sit at the intersection of like how American sports leagues do their thing, and how European soccer does their thing, and they're both very different. And by the way, lest we forget, the actual most popular soccer league in this country is Liga MX, which has playoffs twice a year. So sometimes yeah. we get a little bit too Eurocentric in our thinking of what's the right way to do it. And then League MX, they expanded their playoffs too. So, yeah, I, these conversations are fascinating. Um, but, yeah, I don't, there, there is never going to be a bright, perfect answer where everyone's happy. Yeah, it, I think it's, uh, as fans, we're not, I guess, thinking about, especially the, the aspect that you're talking about, about explaining the playoff format to the casual fan. And because we are, we are not casual fans, we're like, we don't even think about the casual fans, yeah, right? Like, somehow we still need to explain it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, that, that's a, you know, the, the job of the announcer who is not, na- or, or, or the narrator to kind of explain what's going on. This is why John is good at his job. He cares. He cares about people. And yeah. we don't. That's no. our problem. <laughs> it really, it's, it's the least us- American soccer fans. You guys <laughs> yes. are ruining it for everyone. You guys that are showing up every single day at stadiums. <laughs> And doing podcasts and generating contact uh, content, it's your fault. You've yeah, blown it. Ruining it, dude. Just okay. making yeah. it harder for everyone else, dude. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, the uh, so a, a couple other things. Obviously, the uh, the uh, I, I want to just talk about uh, the the Portland Timbers because I know obviously you are a big Timbers fan. So I just want to make sure uh, you know get your thoughts on this. Hey, season. don't don't smear me with that. Don't call me a big Timbers fan. Hold on, that's that you just <laughs> tuned out eighty percent of the audience with that, <laughs> as we've are. discovered. Yeah, <laughs> he roots for Timber Joey only. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, look, you're, you know, you're. I root for the chainsaw. Whatever the necessary. chainsaw does, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but a, a kind of uh, shocking season, I, I would say. You know, uh, uh, lots of ups and downs. Obviously, um, uh, you know, getting rid of the coach. Um, but for a team that generally, like, especially the the, the signing of Evander, who I thought was just, I, I think is going to be an absolute star in this league. Just such a absolute baller. Um, but they just couldn't figure it out, and, and, and you know it all fell apart even at the in the last game of the season. They didn't make the playoffs. But just uh, just a quick temperature check. Uh, how how do you feel about the Timbers this year? It's um, and my son and I were at that game decision day against Houston, and the atmosphere it felt like a playoff atmosphere. It was terrific, and the the team just didn't they just weren't there. And and I actually I really enjoyed how Houston played. They they were they were a really interesting team to me. It was fun watching them in person. Listen, I it's. It's tough because I have long-standing personal relationships with a lot of these people. I think it starts at the top right now with the Timbers. And the, one of the strengths of the Portland Timbers historically was really active, engaged ownership with Merritt Paulson. And, and I think for a long time I would have said the defining characteristic of successful MLS teams are ones where the owner, him or herself, is, is really involved day by day and or has empowered financially and otherwise other people to make decisions. It's absentee ownership that hurts MLS clubs. And you can look at the teams in MLS that struggle, and you can look at their ownership struggle, and you can kind of figure out the reasons why, generally speaking. Not always true. And so my concern for Portland right now is you have in Merritt Paulson an owner who has said, I, I'm not going to be involved day to day. So either he's really not, and he's really handed over the keys, or he is, but he's trying to not appear to be. Either way, it's not a great situation. It's it's kind of a stasis. And you go from the guy who was the GM forever in Gavin Wilkinson. Big change to Ned Grabovoy. It's his first time as a GM. You've had huge changes on the business side. I mean, it's the three most important people from a front office perspective for the timber success are gone overnight for very legitimate reasons. And I don't think they've even 
come close to figuring out what the future looks like, really, and what that successful pathway looks like. So some of the stuff was a long time coming. Uh, listen, Dairon Espria, Sebastian Blanco, absolute legends. But, like, you've been relying on them for years now to save you off the bench. Like, that was what I noticed in the second half, where it's like, here comes Dairon and here comes Blanco. You know, it's like it's 2018. Like, it's, it's, it's yeah. hard sometimes to have succession plans and to turn over rosters in MLS. Um, I think Evander, I agree with you, Evander could be something. They've got some other pieces. They, they've had a hard time, the Timbers, historically, getting young guys in and ramped up. It's been hit or miss. Coaching change, there's a lot that needs to happen. Um, but the, at the end of the day, what they can always rely on is they've got a city um, and a fan base that's really engaged in a significant way. And there's something that's always going to be special about Portland, about the Timbers. And so... I'm really hoping they figure it out, but it, it very much does start from the top. Yeah, I'm just shocked the uh, the strategy of uh, Dyron get in there and do a couple of bicycle kicks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they you know work. you got in that. Hey, locker. it's worked. It's worked a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's been, uh, just uh, absolutely remarkable. So um, the okay, so uh, I want to mention it because you uh, the the Euros draw uh, is happening uh, December second. And oh wait, are you? It's, it's going to be on Fox. Are you involved in it? Are you? So being... I'm going to be hosting because it's, it's a college Ooh. football Saturday. So the Let's draw go. itself, and we all know if we if we love soccer, we know that no one loves a draw show more than these soccer confederations: FIFA, <laughs> UEFA, Comnibol. The pageantry. The, listen, this is this is it. So I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be hosting our sort of studio show. Stu is going to be in Hamburg, Germany, where the draw is going to be. I'm going to be on the desk filling in for Rob. Listen, we're, we're so excited to have the Euros on Fox Sports for the first time. It's been so much fun doing these qualifiers. Um, you've got, you know, a couple teams that have pulled away that look really good. You've got a bunch of other nations that are right in the mix going down to the final day. Italy has a terrific chance to miss yet another big tournament, uh, which is really exciting here in two weeks and, and what, how that's going to play out. Scotland are back in for the first time in forever, and Stu is beyond excited about that. So we're so thrilled to have the Euros on Fox Sports. As I said... We've got the Euros and Copa America at the exact same time. Um, and so to have these day-night doubleheaders next summer is going to be incredible. The draw for Copa America is coming up, too. So, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled to get to, to get to be a part of it. And you get subjected to more of my face in addition to my voice uh, on television yeah. in a few yeah. weeks. Yeah, I mean, we need, we need more of both, John, <laughs> frankly. Also, John, can I just get you saying into the camera how important these games are going to be, both the Euros and Copa America? <laughs> and that's really just so I can show my wife when this summer. Yeah, exactly. Um, not present. Hi, I'm John Strong. If you're a significant other of someone that is trying to give up four weeks of their life to watch nothing but soccer, I can assure you how legitimate uh, and non grounds for divorce that is. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's like, you know, how you, people usually have those, uh, like, teams will have those uh, template letters mm -hmm. that they would send uh, that um, post on social media so you can give to your employer to say, like, while you, why you will be missing work. Right, right, right. Very important. Now, I mean, we have the luxury of just speaking to the person right, yes. very actively involved. Well, I, so I can do a couple dummy. What I can do is I can cover my face and it'd be like 2025 FIFA Club World Cup <laughs> and be like, you know, yeah, yeah, MLS Cup this. Conference Semifinals. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. Yeah, whatever, whatever it is you want to insert there Good, for sure. I appreciate yeah. it. We were gonna, we were just gonna do AI, John Strong. Yeah, to yeah. These, well, we but... don't need it. <laughs> that we're about we five or six AU, years away from John like, Strong. hey, listen, John and Stu, we love you guys, but we have enough on tape already. We, <laughs> yeah. the computers have it from here. Thank you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. You might have just saved my marriage. So thank you. <laughs> okay. I mean, look, I, I I think for us we could we could use the excuse of like, honey, this is for work. I yeah. have to this is the research I need to do. Yeah, but we watch so much soccer that I think my wife thinks I'm watching old games to just not <laughs> do chores. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Just trying to avoid her. She's not looking for like live or en vivo at the time. <laughs> like, oh, I I, I don't think he knows how to Listen, work the VR. It's one of the biggest. It's one of the biggest scores that I that I nailed was was marrying a woman who is herself a soccer fan, and so that's been one of the best things. Is when it's like, hey, sweetie, um, you know the U.S. is playing Ghana. She's like, absolutely. What time? No problem. And and getting our son into it now as well. Um, that's like family entertainment to watch games, which is a that's huge beautiful. blessing because I know a lot of colleagues of mine where it is much more beg, borrow, and steal to sit and watch these games sometimes, yeah. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. I'll tell you, you know, I married someone who's uh, really into cooking chicken parm. She's so good at it. <laughs> hey, man. And uh, maybe I don't get to watch soccer, but I get cured meats <laughs> and chicken parm. It's pretty okay. good. Yeah. You, it's a, you know, you got to uh, pick your battles. Yeah. You what gotta... she doesn't do for me with the soccer, <laughs> she does. Whenever I come home from a road trip, she always makes me chicken parm. It's the best. Yeah. My, my wife is more like she'll she'll watch me watch Everton yeah. and or look at the Everton result and be like, Okay, it's gonna be a rough day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me put my hand on his shoulder. <laughs> yeah. you know? she, know, she knows that I need compassion at yeah. this time. Well, you didn't have a choice. I mean, you were born into Everton because you grew up right down the street from the stadium. <laughs> right. There's literally no other team Scouse that you accent, could be a fan of. Yeah. He was yeah. the Dominican in <laughs> Liverpool. Um, <laughs> His wife one time did say, like, I just don't know why he didn't pick a good team. <laughs> which yeah. is the perfect like thing. You, you literally volunteered for this. The, the, yeah. I mean, Look, I blame, I blame Tim Howard uh, for he gets forcing me, forcing sure. my yeah. hand to make the decision because he was the only connection I had to the Premier League at the time. Mm. And But you know what? I've gotten to tell Tim Howard to his face. I say it a lot more politely. Yeah. I say it more politely than I'm saying it now. Yeah, because he does look like an action hero <laughs> in person. Man is but I, well, to that point, it was one of my favorite things in, in the last year or so of American soccer is how many Americans falling in love with Leeds and then falling very, very much oh, yeah, out of yeah. love yeah. and like now hating Leeds United. That was a I, really fun, and honest, the Leeds tragic fans circle. I've fallen out of love with the Americans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how yeah, quickly yeah. went, it's like, I'm sorry, you said what about Jesse Marsh? You're dead <laughs> to me. We're done. We're done here. Thank you. I do love that all those American Leeds fans became Manchester United fans and like this team too <laughs> damn maybe it's us maybe that's the issue <laughs> that's what Harry Kane is saying right now <laughs> uh well uh John uh another reminder uh, so December 2nd the Euros draw and then December 9th uh you'll be on the call with Stu for uh the MLS Cup final uh on uh on Fox Sports uh, there's the, oh, the it, perfect voice on regular for Fox MLS right Cup. I'm assuming it's gonna be on regular Fox we'll be right? on network Fox once yeah. again yes Amazing, it's amazing. So I'm sure the uh, perfect voices for that for that game. Love both. Uh, of you I'm sure call. we'll we'll probably see you there uh, at MLS Cup. We'll uh, most likely be there. We usually uh, always go. Uh, so it'll be great to uh, reconnect uh, wherever MLS Cup is. Um, so John Strong, thank you so much for hanging out, man. This is seriously it was, it was nice to just. I mean, we, we we talk shop, but it's just great to see you, man. Great to see you. Buddy. I, I appreciate that. I'm I'm happy to know we haven't been forgotten, uh, which is which is which is nice. Not and yeah, all. hopefully, Remind wherever we are, <laughs> Cincinnati, Orlando, uh, yeah, what's the priority list right now? Whatever city we end up in, uh, in the second week of December. Look forward to yeah. seeing you. Right, 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 right. Uh, it doesn't matter where it is, we're going to be there. All right, we're back. We are back, Dan. <laughs> all right. You know, uh, across the decades, <laughs> uh, Stu Gotts and I, <laughs> you know, Stu Gotts, when uh, we first started working together it was great it it, it was dan yeah. it, it was dan and you know the, the one of my favorite things uh, to talk to you about <laughs> all right <laughs> all right uh, can I'm one of our 75 producers with microphones <laughs> say something now yeah what's up guys how are you okay <laughs> right, yeah. look at that yeah. great hey uh you bit of a gas bag. <laughs> quite, quite the gas no? bag. <laughs> I mean, all right. <laughs> I'm going to walk away now for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to make sure and remind everybody that soccer is dead, folks. And I don't know what I don't know what to tell you. Nobody the tequila. Nobody watches it. Over there? Nobody cares. Nobody cares about the sport. Okay. I know these young people. I went, they, they keep telling me soccer is going to... And you're live, Pablo Torre. What are your thoughts? <laughs> you know, man, it's crazy out there, man. <laughs> All right. Well done. All Great right. Great job, Mike, Ryan, Ruiz. All three of you have done an incredible job <laughs> booking this show across the decades. <laughs> we got to make sure we thank John Strong. Oh, one... Fuerte. Juan Fuerte. People forget okay. because I speak with such a professional accent <laughs> that I am that I'm Guano okay. and born in Jersey. We are white. We are white. We are quite. <laughs> <laughs> what a Stu God impression! <laughs> Is that a thing? That's a thing Stu God says. He would have said. He would. Are... You make mistakes. Well, why, we make mistakes. You know. I feel I... like my hat's not high enough for. We're, I you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the Grateful Dead. I, uh, I hate soccer. I love cigarettes. Mm. 
and I constantly yeah. imply that I smoke marijuana. Speaking of Grateful Dead, the Yankees uh, <laughs> in this playoffs. Or the Jets. Why, <laughs> was he a, why am I a Jets fan? <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, you don't have to adopt everything Long Islanders do. Why yeah. did I do this to myself? One time I'm in a- <laughs> so, uh, All right. Halloween is still here, folks. Uh, right. People say Alexis doesn't dress up. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, let people see the shirt, though. Straight out of 305. Uh, okay. Right. Let's go. Bro. I, I yo, got Miami people be wearing some of the loudest T-shirts, bro. I got, I got my Grateful Dead shirt. Got the Bears hat, Dancing Bears. Got Let's the sink. Let's go. What are we doing here? Bro. Shout out Levitar Show. Shout All out right. the, the big Shout bosses. out Levitar Show, man. Okay. Uh, just two gas bags on Levitar mm-hmm. Show. You love to see it, okay? Juju, say something cool so Gen <laughs> Z <laughs> listens. <laughs> hey, Juju, we got to make sure we never see your eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's my only yeah, yeah. rule, Juju. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just say something so that the comments go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got a strategy, folks. <laughs> um, all right. You know you got too many people when there's stadium seating for your producer. Okay. I'm going to just be honest with you. I thought they were doing a college lecture <laughs> yeah, yeah. on that show. Is this part of Everton's new stadium, bro? <laughs> uh, all right. Amazing. Thank you. Happy Halloween, everybody. The um, yeah. uh, uh, That's all of our producers. Let, let's get to... <laughs> Tight five. Let's baby. get to tight five. We're doing it again. All right, because people. It's back. All three of you loved it. <laughs> so we're doing it again. We're doing it again. <laughs> so just a reminder, you know, the, a tight five is the thing that, you know, stand up comics, they'll do the, the their late night set. They're like, they, they try to work a, a perfect five minute set. To to display to show to everybody to showcase what they can do mm-hmm. and we're gonna do we're it took doing you that. six minutes to explain a type five <laughs> okay I did it or well, you're being Dan right now bro you're being Dan <laughs> your gas bag <laughs> <laughs> maybe Dan there's some wisdom in that okay I think Alexis just doesn't like explaining things to anybody I just uh, you get it five yeah, minutes nobody set, no sometimes boom. people don't get it anyway so we got go. we got five categories one minute each mm-hmm. we're gonna get ready guys are gonna have to react to whatever I say one minute gonna hit the bell mm-hmm. on to the next category. Super this cigarette simple. is leaking little things <laughs> everywhere. Okay. You didn't pack it. Let me the see life of Stu Gus. I, I know how to smoke. I'm pack a smoker. It. <laughs> pack it. All right. Ready? You guys ready? <laughs> gonna go with the first topic. Here we go. For Stu Gott slash Christian, Everton have won two games in a row. What do you guys think? Well, we won two games in a row. Uh, Carabao Cup uh, competition was still in it. Arsenal is not. I feel pretty good about that. Uh, The main thing here is uh, beating West Ham and then beating Burnley, which is like, I mean, what what are you going to do? It's Burnley. But looking all right. Uh, the confidence is there, and I, I I sense a trophy in our future. Is that crazy to say? Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think it I think it could happen. We look all right. We look all right. What it's are your not thoughts? a full minute yet. Oh, it's only 20, 30 seconds. Oh my god! Going. I was gonna say, uh, look good. Everton fans have one thing to cheer about, <laughs> and that is a cup. None of us care about. <laughs> Congratulations! I hope you win it, and I hope the what you win is enough money to finish your stadium. <laughs> okay. Right, we got a minute. We're at a minute. So. Second one, the bus attack during the Lyon Marseille that canceled the mm, game dude, last week. There's no humor in this. <laughs> this. This was, I mean, look, it's just uh, sad, unfortunate. You hate seeing stuff like this. This is a, um, you know, the, the coach, uh, we saw the pictures and his yeah, eyes awesome. like uh, uh, his uh, bloody and he, I think he had to get stitches and stuff like that. I think another, an assistant coach maybe also got injured as well. Um, Nine arrests have been made. Am I allowed to interrupt? Yeah. No, 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 I forgot how this works. Uh, n- uh, nine arrests have been made, and I found out that they were throwing petonk balls, bocce balls. What? That's what they were throwing through the window. So this was premeditated because you don't go to a game with bocce balls. That's this is crazy. Of- I mean, what are these? Uh, a bunch of old Italian men in <laughs> yeah, Bensonhurst, yeah, yeah. Brooklyn? The five Italian men and two Jamaican dudes. <laughs> <laughs> That's who calls it petonk. Who's into uh, It was absolutely, him- this is horrific, uh, more horrific than the clothes I'm wearing. <laughs> uh, it's it's sad and it's a sad sad state for for the world of soccer and especially legal. All right, next one. 
Weston McKinney, Moisa King, and Tim Way hitting the squabble video. The squabble, you saw it? Okay, look, Stugatz and Dan doing the squabble. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Uh, look, this, it's a, the, goal, the goal was called back. The goal was called but back. But don't matter, because the vibes were allowed by <laughs> VAR. You feel okay. me? All right. This is what we do, bro. The energy was not called back. It was totally fine, man. That bro. was dope. It was we're great. bringing, we're bringing positive vibes. So what were they listening to before this? It's solo well, mio. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hold on, because Moise Keen, even before Weston McKinney got there, was yeah, I'm sure now he, he was doing that alone. Now he got now some he, people around it. him. Because we're encouraging <laughs> us. Okay. What were y'all doing over there? Yeah, yeah, when it, the moon it, hits your eye <laughs> like a big pizza pie. That's what y'all were well, doing. Hey, that, Moise King was wondering why Chiellini wasn't getting in. <laughs> He's like, no, nah, Chiellini, bro. What are you doing? Why are you now? dabbing with me, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Chiellini, yeah. what? How about they go? All right, Chiellini, go. <laughs> go. <laughs> it's a shame. Uh, go on. <laughs> All right. All right. Next one. Lionel Messi won the Ballon d'Or, guys. An MLS player won the Ballon d'Or. Can we put the photo up that Adidas uh, yeah, I'll put, put up? It. I'll put it up. Put All it right. Up. Yo, didn't get a fresh haircut for this photo. The photo where he's like this. <laughs> With the rings? Bro, he got no fade. How, how you doing that? <laughs> this is a failure from Adidas. This is a failure from Lionel Messi. Wow. His wife, his children, his people, his barbers, the Puerto Rican dude who cuts his hair for Inter Miami. Everybody <laughs> failed. Wow. Everybody missed the intelligence, bro. This is crazy. You're the only one who's made this complaint. Bro, his hair's crazy on the sides. Nah. <laughs> nah. That, that proper fade wasn't... Uh, but at least he got all the rings. Well, I mean, he did it kind of flat. Uh, congratulations. Did, did he really deserve it? It feels a little bit... I'm still a little bit like, yo, Erling Holland, I think, got a massive snub. But it nah, is... Nah, he it deserved is, it. It is messy. Can't I say mean, ocho, bro. Yeah, dude. Uh, he got to wear He got to wear a Kobe jersey. <laughs> Okay. All right, last one, last topic. Since it is Halloween, you guys are dressed up. What is the least favorite candy that you guys have out there? Candy corn. Is it the candy least? corn automatic? The least favorite? I mean, candy corn is bad. I'd rather have raisins. You know, in one family that give you raisins, and you're like, yo, your, your house can't get egg, bro. <laughs> Reasons and if we good. really hated you, we would throw candy corn I'm a healthy house. food like fan. So right? I'm like, yo, give me that raisin. I'll take that raisin. This kid don't. Why are you asking Christian about this? <laughs> Biggest failure is him. What are you, what are you Messi's barber? <laughs> the, uh, I mean, candy corn is, is not a good candy. I'm trying to think. I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of a worse one. So it has to be candy corn. But there's... There's there's some bad I guess you know the the like grandma candies that some people give like the Werther's or the little strawberry the little strawberry yeah yeah that's you we know that's like penny candy you bro you can't be given those those are called something what what's the actual name of it I don't just know found, the name too. I just nah. found out the name of it recently really yeah it has like nah, a I'd I just thought it was like abuela candy but abuela it's, candy <laughs> they always have them like where do you get these they give this at a church <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, hey, that's a tight five, folks. Hey, <laughs> Come on. Shout out to the homie. Mark Norman. Mark Norman for uh, being a part of uh, of tight five, forever being a, t- a part of tight five. So. You're locked in, baby. Okay, so uh, yeah, shout out to Mark. Thank you so much for doing that. And uh, and that's a, another tight five in the books, everybody. Mm. Um, again, shout out to uh, John Strong uh, for joining us. Um, a, a, a reminder, go, uh, go watch MLS Cup Final. The Euros uh, draw coming up on uh on fox sports and uh as always make sure you subscribe to the cooligans podcast wherever you get the podcast and uh subscribe on youtube join the patreon we had a, a, a we have a really dope episode out uh right now about all all the drama going on in uh in wozo uh, mm. in women's soccer that's a way to put it <laughs> so uh but go check that out because that is exclusively available on patreon patreon.com slash soccer cooligans all right we'll be back on monday with another Hot episode. Um, we have uh, the NWSL playoffs uh, are, are starting back up. There's too many playoffs. This weekend. Very uh, cool playoffs the, happening all at once. Very playoffs? Cool guests on Monday. Another this is what cool we guest. do. So uh, we'll recap uh, some uh, some big matches in NWSL uh, on Monday. And uh, so a lot to look forward to, everybody. All right. Oh, we have a special guest on Monday. Yeah, coming in in studio. I, why do I not remember who's uh, I believe you do. Morning footy. Drinks mate. You'll oh, find out who it is. Oh, okay. Who could it be? <laughs> <laughs> who drinks mate on there? Yeah, uh, anyone. <laughs> Ali Trostmorton, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna. It's just gonna be. Uh, you know. Um, 
uh, you know, Susanna wearing Charlie's jacket. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Where's she going to land the jet? Away <laughs> <laughs> to the danger zone. All right. We'll see you Monday, everybody. Peace. Love you guys.